Hello and welcome back to the On The Burst podcast. I'm your coach, Brandon Savage, and I'm joined by my assistant coach, Chimmy Moody. Where is the energy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go the four scenes in Orlando? And I just remind myself of um, what's... I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. You gotta say me, <laughs> me. You, you <laughs> that's me of, it. That's it. Is that like um, all in favor? <laughs> all opposed. Are you talking about the mole man from Simpsons? No, there, there's a viral video going around at the moment. Oh, okay, um, the here, man. just just keep talking and I'll get it up. Okay, yeah, um, mole man. You, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to. Um, I had a. Um, you had a thing. Yeah, the thing, but then you sort of just distracted me because you had some like little song and dance that I, wasn't, <laughs> I didn't know the back, like the routine. Um, Here, I'll, I'll play it for you right now. I, if you're on TikTok, you would have seen this, so a lot of people would have would have seen this already. I have a question for everybody: Who wants to win fifty? Oh wait, no, no, wait. That's my edited version for Winners Locker. Question for everybody. Who wants to go to the Four Seasons Orlando? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kid. Um, yeah, she's cute. really like um, aware. It's called a self-conscious baby, apparently. And yeah, uh, that they, they actually went to the Four Seasons Orlando and they won and dined the babies. Or the thing in the comments is kind of like this baby runs the family finances. Like mm. th- this baby is like the adult of the family. And Stewie Griffin sort yeah, of got a yeah. well have it at its time sort of thing. So what they've done is they've kind of run with it and the baby's wearing a suit out to dinner while mm. eating spaghetti with her hands. <laughs> Probably the CEO of something soon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been funny following that journey. Anyway, continue. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. How, right. about, how about them Panthers though? The Panthers. Jesus oh. Christ. We we're, were going through cheaping last week and did not see it coming. I feel like the the odds kind of really the odds I reckon the odds really influenced the punters because I looked at the odds and I'm like, should I be considering the Sharks a lot more? And I think for you as well, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm just tipping the Panthers because I go for the Panthers. Yeah, but in my mind, I wasn't. Like, I mean, I, when I come to betting, I, I, I was going to bet the Sharks. And I thought, oh, I don't, I don't want to bet against them. So I took either team 1-12, to 12, which didn't help. Um, yeah, I mean, Nico obviously went down after 31 minutes. So he wasn't in the game the whole time, but... He had a shocker to start. We had two kicks out yeah. in the full. Oh, he looks so uncomfortable. And the Panthers, were, it's exactly what we said last week. The Panthers are going to come out pissed off. They know <laughs> they are the big dogs. And they they, proved, they put 42 on the Sharks. 42 points without Nathan Cleary. Yeah, Jerome was better than I thought he could. Hey, Jer- Jerome so had his good. best game I've ever seen him play. It really got me thinking, yeah, I think you might go all right over there at the Tigers yeah. running your own little oh. ship. I'm not going to lie. That was the first thing I thought of too. I know I was thinking of Origin thinking, okay, he probably deserves to get picked. Yeah. But I was more thinking the Tigers, him and Lockie Galvin, yeah. it's like I'm much more confident they can be a combo right now. He's going to he's gonna go over there and have that mentality every week back against the wall playing for the Tigers. Yeah, so <coughs> in um, Suncorp, a magic round, it felt like um, we were at you know the Waz. Mm. Home stadium and the Sharks this weekend, they would have felt like they were in hell, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, Origin is a big talking point. We're going to talk about Origin and the teams, what our thoughts on it are. Dylan Edwards, a fullback for the New South Wales Blues, To'o and Lomax on the wings, Crichton and Swali'i in the centres, Luai and Hines in the halves, Trebojevic and Payne Haas in the front row, Trebojevic captain. Reese Robson at hooker, Liam Martin, Angus Crichton on the edges, Cameron McInnes at lock, Isaiah Yo, Hamoli Olakowatu, Spencer Linu, Hudson Young on the bench, and on the extended, Matt Burton, Luke Keary, and Mitch Barnett. Initial thoughts here. It's a good side with what we've got left. You know, I'd love for all the, you know, like I'd love Turbo and Cleary to be in the side and be fit and ready to go. Um, but looking at the rest of what, what they've put together, I, I like it. I mean... There's a lot of different ways I probably would have gone different. I didn't have Sue Lee in my in my side, but he's he's got so much like uh, about him. He's, he's he's a real. He's got a lot of aggression and a lot of. I think he could be a made for Origin. He's and real I'm, physical, isn't he? Yeah, you'll get this one crack before he goes over, and we, we might be looking forward to hoping he comes back after this one. I've got a good feeling for about sure. him, but maybe there might be defensive issues. I'm a bit worried about. I felt like a. I don't know, Matty Burton. I'm. I feel like I trust him a bit more. Um, 
but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Matty um, with the Dylan Edwards thing. Super stoked for him and massive congratulations. But as soon as he got picked, I actually felt really guilty. Eh? Like, yeah, same. I was same. like, oh Teddy, I feel, I feel so because I've been sort of. I was on Teddy, and you know, only last week came over to the Dylan Edwards. Yeah, all right, I'm ready. To, let's pick him. But you know, I felt real guilty seeing him not there. I felt like, and you just know Teddy's like he's copping it. And he's played well this year, doesn't deserve it. But I heard Madge's comments on NRL 360 just saying, Teddy's been really good, but I felt felt like it was time. You can never be loyalty. How long does loyalty last? Because you can't be loyal forever. Mm. And I just felt like it was the right time for Dylan Edwards. And I thought that was a really good answer. It Teddy can definitely do a job in origin still and mm. do well in origin, but... I think just as Madge said, it's it's time for Dylan Edwards. Yeah, well, you saw how good Teddy <coughs> was on the weekend. We yeah. touched on it in the last pod. He, like, he could have gone out, you know, with, had a shit game, and then everyone just would have been going. A bloody hope it's Dylan Edwards' side, but he just – he had a blinder. Yeah. He actually went, like, well above what t- yeah. t- Dylan did on the – he had two tr- what, two tries, three tries this. It was in everything. Um, But, yeah, got a feel for the bloke. But on the, on the flip side, I kind of also – feel for Dylan Edwards as well because this is what I'll say like I'm congratulate obviously he's stoked about being in the side but it's a tough time to come in like it's a he's coming in to, with a, a not a fully struck you'd you'd want to put your best foot forward you'd probably want to have Nath in the side as well like do you want to get that win and I'm not saying we can't win without Nath but he's coming in he's there's a lot of pressure on him because he's taken the the captain you know the captain spot but I just feel like if Maybe the side was a bit stronger. It would have been a lot less pressure on him. The, the, well. the side, side to side versus Queensland, like it's, it's. I don't think quick. we're that far apart. I, I think we're, we're, looks we're not so good on paper. When you look at it, it just looks like puzzle pieces just connecting right. Like yeah. it looks so right. I'll tell you what, it's though. we've seen it before. I'll tell you what, I, I think we, with Queensland, they can outscore us with points, but we don't have that side available. Like, we don't have Tommy Turbo, Latrell Mitchell, Nathan Cleary to absolutely blitz him away with points. We have the side that can really give it to them mm-hmm. and defensive-minded uh, and put them into a grind, put them off their game. And I like the direction they've gone. They've they've gone in a direction that I think is there's a clear game plan. Whereas last year with Freddie Fittler, the frustrating thing was we had all these players available, but he'd kind of choose... Half players who were defensive minded, but half players who like there was a bit of spark about them, and there was obviously no clear direction with where the side was going. I see what you mean. Uh, so I really do like we've got an actual coach in here coaching the side. So Freddie's still a coach. Let's let's not be too hard on Freddie. He's he's um, he's, <laughs> he's a mad a dog. Bit of um, a loopy coach, but anyway, yeah, like Jim, everyone's a little different. Um, I do want to. Um, what was I going to touch on? Well, I was going to go through some questions of the side and you can talk about yep. them. Obviously, Dylan Edwards and Teddy was the first one. What are your thoughts on Suwali'i and Lomax? Um, they're obviously debutants. Uh, Stephen Crichton, To'o, Luai were, were assumed to play on that left edge. But in my opinion, I, I think Suwali'i is going to play on his natural left where he's played all year and Stephen Crichton's going to play on the right Toto on the left, Lomax on the right to split that all up. Yes, it does take away from the Penrith connection. Yeah, they could go. It's hard. You could make a case for either side. Yep. Like keep them on their natural sides where they're playing or get the combo. It's, yeah, it's hard. We'll see what happens. I think either will work. I, I think they're going to stick to where they've been playing, in my opinion. I, I think the Penrith connection, yeah, that's tempting to have. But you're weakening that other side so much by having Suwali and Lomax out there as debutants with Nico Hines as well, mind you. Hmm. Yeah. Um, did you remember what you were going to say? No, I did. I forgot. I oh, sorry. I'm just saying with your conversation. No, too. sorry. Uh, Jake Trebojevic is in the front row, number eight, and named captain. Isaiah Yo is on the bench. So these kind of tie in together. I like um, this captaincy. I think it's a better... I know I, 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 Nath's the, probably the best captain. Yeah. But maybe even... I think Jake, like, just the, how intense the bloke is... Every like and having the permission, like no, he's, he doesn't need the permission to rally the boys on the field. But when he's the captain, like just everyone's like he's gonna listen to him and he's gonna fire him up and he's gonna set a standard and lead by example. So I think it's a good thing. I love I love it. I actually think 
I was expecting Isaiah Yo to be captain because I think that transition between Yo and, and when Cleary comes back Pass in the side. Over, it's yeah. not a big fuss. But yeah. I guess Jake Dubrovich is the kind of guy who, if Cleary comes in the side and Thumbs up, Nathan, no worries, he, welcome yeah, back, Nate. Like, yeah. But like, he's the clear vice captain after that, which I do like. I love mm. that. And you're right in the fact of saying that if he's um, given that captaincy role, people are forced to listen to him. Whereas in other situations, like if, if their back's against the wall and he's like given his passionate speech, like he might not be listened to as much. So in your I, own head, thinking about your own thing, but when the captain speaking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So um, Isaiah Yo over uh, Cameron McInnes over Isaiah Yo at lock. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's it. I'm not going to fuss over it. Like mm. uh, it's f- probably fine. I I don't I don't get it. Maybe it's like yeah. Like, you think that with Cam McInnes that like you start him on the bench, he, then he's fresh and he can prov- cover hooker if need. Well, well maybe they're going to start him in the lock. Put him to maybe he's going to play eighty or something, and they'll put him to to cover Reese Robson for a bit. I just don't know how to work. Rob, oh, that's the part to what what I was going to say as well before is what Madge was sort of saying because my one main concern for the side is just that we don't have cover for the back line if something mm. happens. And it was on 360 last night. I think Gordy or well, it might have been Gordon Taylor's one said, what are you going to do about that? Or it might have been Braith, I don't know. But said, you've got no, what, what's going to happen if something happens to the back line? He goes, oh, we're, we're, we've got that, we've got the back line covered. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing, how we're covering it. Like, we've got it covered. Yeah. But then he sort of alluded something to he'd asked a couple of the coaches to play some of their players in centre f- for a, a bit or something like that. So I don't know if that's like a second rower who's gone to centre or something. I'm trying to think who it could be over the <sighs> Hudson Young, maybe. Hudson I was thinking Young. Angus. Did he spend time there for like? Is that only due to injury? I, I don't think he spent much time but he, at centre. But he kind of hinted at I've I like I got a coach to sort of got one of the come up with the coaches to sort of see Manly have a, over the last couple. Of weeks. Manly have had a lot of opportunities to do it with Olakwatu, but Ben Trebojevic has gone there, so I think we can rule Olakwatu yeah, out. It's too big. Spencer Linu, we can rule him out. Yeah. It's either going to be it's Crichton or Hudson Young, surely. But I just don't feel confident that they're, they're the guys that's going to... Like Reese Walsh, we call, well, he's the guy that can, will burn mm-hmm. our centres, our fast centres. Yeah, they'll, they'll We'll burn them anyway. But then having to stick one of any other bloke there that's not a centre... Has Lee Martin gone to centre? I don't know, but he seems to be confident. He went, I like the way he said it. He's like, oh, yeah, we've got a plan. I'm not telling you what it is. <laughs> like... But then sort of like, but then he kind of gave that little bit away. I might go watch it back to see what he said. I think Angus Crichton is the clear option. He played, uh, I was listening to a podcast with Josh Mantle the other day to, to listen to, um, I I saw that they uploaded like a reel and he was talking about his experience overseas. And we obviously know the rumor going around Mm. about what he did overseas he didn't admit to anything like that. He said, it's not true. He didn't Um, deny anything either. No, oh. he did, no, he said it wasn't true. Oh, like, the sure. rumours weren't true. So uh, It's probably not. It's, it's a bit abstract. Yeah, it is abstract. abstract. And, like, Josh Mansell brought up, there was a WhatsApp message going around, and, yeah, he laughed, yeah. He laughed it off and, and said, yeah, uh, it's, it's not true. He had a relationship breakdown. And yeah. Just like, and me- it, it was actual mental health. That makes more health. sense. Yeah. It, makes, it makes a lot of sense. I still kind of believe the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. But after listening to that, you take his word for it. Like, yeah. like I don't know if he's going to admit to doing drugs, but... um. He admitted on that podcast that he's keen on rugby union. Um, he, he doesn't know where his next contract's going to take him, but if, he, if union is the play, then he will. But when he did play union, he played inside centre. So I think that's... I'm not doubting. I just think it's a speed factor. You know what I mean? I know you... Yeah, too, just because of Reese Walsh. Yeah, I know, I know like... If you cop an injury, you're still sliding bits around. But I just think Matty Burton's a bit more rangier. He's, he's you know, he's. He, I'd just like to see him in the seventeen. Does off the bench. I, I've got a theory for you. Does Nico Hines defend at fullback, and Dylan Edwards go into the front line and a forward, like a forward defend in the middle where Nico Hines was meant to? If there's an injury, or just in general play, in like just no, if there's an injury no. in the outside back. So say Sawili so he goes down. Yeah. Does Dylan Edwards go 
and defend at left centre. Yeah. Nico Hines defends at fullback so they can have a forward go into the middle. I know that's a bit confusing. In There's a t- only one player in though, really, from the centre. Yeah, so but but it kind of yeah. hel- it kind of helps because like you're not having a, a centre. Y- you still got a centre and you've still got Dylan Edwards. I reckon we should just copy, like just just be like, oh, you know, we just need to copy Billy. Billy's doing it. Let's do it. We're well, doing we it did it last year with Appy and Robson. Uh, that's another one. Appy misses out. Robson is the sole hooker. Obviously, McInnes is there. What are your thoughts on that one? Like I couldn't have picked. I, well, none of them really stood out, and I, you know, I do think Robson, although he hasn't been like super, super like in form, like set, try assists or you know making absolute statements in defence. He's going through, getting through his yeah. work. He's not, he's, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and uh, he does have, he does have a bit more. Gr- I think he got, it, he got sides about him. Yeah, too. yeah. Madge was saying on three sixty once again that the interview on three sixty is is gold. It's a good one. So go go watch it. And he's very upfront. He says Reese Robson. He's been doing it both sides of the ball. Yeah. Uh, he's been setting up tries and creating stuff and he's also been defending really well he also Whereas, says something about happy young chorus how it looks like he's got magic noodles on his head oh did he say that no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. i was like oh because i wasn't paying <laughs> fully attention to that no 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 um but he does though it does look like a full cooked pack of noodles that just it been really do- on. oh it looks bad doesn't it yeah it's a weird it's a perfect noodle color like oh, he looks weird with brown hair these days though but it still looks so bad. He needs, needs, to, he needs to get some um, of that purple shampoo into it. That's all yeah. he needs to do, I think. Um, and, and make it less noodly. Um, yeah. Uh, last one, Hudson Young and Olaquatu. How do you think they're going to use them? I guess we can add Spencer Linu to that. How do we think he... Obviously, he gets used how he does in club just land. Just want to say, I just I picked him in my origin side. Did the you? first. Remember when we uh, did our first sit down? Yeah. I said, this might be a bit rogue. I know he's only just come back, but... I hope he goes good. Um, yeah, I think he'll they'll just use him. Probably not to the extent of minutes, like 30 minutes that you'd get. I reckon it'll probably be less, and it'll just maybe like closer to... Do you think they go into the edges or play in the middle? Lino? Olaquatu and Young. Oh, it's hard. I don't know. Probably... I, I can't... I just can't picture either of them really playing through. I guess it's a different beast and you kind of have to. Yeah. I just can't picture it. Olaquatu's got the bigger body for it, so maybe... I I kind of like um, yeah I'd I'd, I'd have Ola Kawatu on an edge and Crichton on an edge and then I'd have Liam Martin playing more through the middle. Yeah, Liam Martin's played middle in the Origin in the past, so that's the way I like it. Uh, the Queensland lineup like this: Reese Walsh at fullback, Coates and Tuolungi on the wing, Hammer and Holmes in the centres, Tom Dearden and Cherry Evans in the halves, Cotter and Collins at front row, Ben Hunt at hooker, Sua and Nanai. On the edges, Pat Carrigan at lock, Harry Grant, Fodder Waker, Hopgood and Cobbo on the bench, Kafusi, Piacora and Ezra Mam on the extended. The big one here, no Dave Fafita. Uh, Billy was quoted saying that... You're not playing good enough footy, mate. <laughs> you were playing good last year, mate, but nothing good this yeah, year. Yeah, you said a bye. Uh, yeah, you played good last year, but didn't play good this it's no year. no good, mate. Just what, what are your thoughts? Oh, I don't know. Well, Billy said, he, the one thing he said, he goes, oh, you know, he's been watching... What, yes, what you, how do you feel about the side that you've picked? He goes, well, pretty good. I've, I can tell you what, I've watched a lot of their footy. And that doesn't mean he's watched every one of their games. That means he's probably watched every one of their games methodically back to front, inside out, from different angles. Yeah. You know, hanging upside down from the lounge. Like, he's watched inside out, but, but he mustn't be paying attention to David Fafita. Like, what does he mean? What does he mean? <coughs> like, it, it also depends on the style of play they're going for. you. If they're looking at using Reese Walsh to burn their edges just I all the time. choice of words should have been better. Like not playing good. Like, yeah. Like, like I'm not trying to, like he doesn't, it. he doesn't fit the style of play we're looking for. Mate, yeah. Or whatever it is, but geez, he's been, he's been on fire. My theory is that, um, he's looking to burn New South Wales on the edges. They've got Reese Walsh as an absolute X factor. And these second rows in Nanai and Sua, they run hard lines and you can, you can use them. Or you don't have to. Mm. And they run hard lines whether they're getting the ball or not. Whereas Fafita isn't known for doing that. Like he's just a straight one out. Like he's getting the ball or he's not. Mm. The decoys he runs aren't very... Believable. Exactly. Like you see him run a decoy, you can tell he's not getting that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, So my thought is they're they're looking to come hard at us. And obviously they should. He can just turn a game. Like, if they're behind at any stage, like, I know these playing the most elite players 
you know, from New South Wales, not just playing, like, and, for, you know, like, week to week, he can find his weakness and go, oh, target that half or target that five eight, or he might know that that guy's not so good, like, whatever. Mm. But still, even though they're the best of the best, he can just rip it apart whenever he wants. Yeah. I'd, and, I'd be having him. He'd, he'd be one of my <coughs> first pick, if I was picking a side to play for my life. Yeah, and, like, Nico Hines is defending on that right edge. You get him one-on-one with Nico Hines, like, it's over. Nico Hines... It's improved out of sight this year, but... Maybe that's the ace up his sleeve he wants if things don't go well. You know, like, if you've still got something like, I'll run this out, and if that yeah. doesn't win, then you're like, now I'll release for feet <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, crazy. Tough, tough miss. And how about him being like he took it like a Queenslander? <laughs> you know took it I mean? like a Queenslander. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, Queenslanders are just such better blokes. So did you just... <laughs> hear Buzz Rothfield ask... Yeah, dropping him has nothing to do with his recent... Uh, contract negotiations and he Billy had the straightest oh, face mate, but no, zero buzz. Yeah, zero yeah. and I thought that was a ridiculous question but I was just like you fucking Queenslander you shit <laughs> like, like like there's something behind this that we're turning half the audience off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, origin time so stuff yes but apart from that the rest of their side's pretty good Selwyn Cobbo at 17 Four of the last six games in origin, uh, an outside back has gone down. So I actually think that makes sense. And mm. once again on NRL 360, uh, Billy said that they've got a plan for him regardless. Like in the past, Caelan Pong has come on, played 13, Michael Morgan, Cooper Cronk, Daly Cherry Evans, they've all had a plan. And I think in the past, you know, Freddie has had them players on the bench without a plan. Mm. I think if you've got a plan for them, they can affect the game. They can break up the kind of attack if things aren't working. And I like that they've got a plan for him because Cobbo, he he fills in every position. You can actually picture him though. Like if we if we were to just try to have a plan for Maddie and just bring him on with 10 minutes to go, I don't know how I would use him to be honest, yeah. Maddie Burton. Yeah. But with Stel and Cobbo, you can sort of picture him just roaming yeah. and getting, getting real ruthless with his yeah. friends. And yeah, so That's I think he could... Go well there. Uh, see, we, we could have just picked Latrell Mitchell on the bench instead of like, that would have been good, wouldn't it? Mm. Uh, my, one of my mates, he's not a big footy guy at all. He's only just got into it last year. And I think he doesn't really get the concept that Latrell's the main, like being around for a lot longer and Cobbo's the new guy. But he calls um, he calls Latrell evil Cobbo. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's kind of like you'd be calling the other guy like angelic um, Latrell, like you'd be calling Cobo because you know you yeah. don't compare the lower, smaller thing. Yeah, to the so thing. so Cobo's like the 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 big thing. Yeah, he's like, oh, that's just the evil. That's just the evil Cobo. I evil love it. Cobo. It's a great analogy. <laughs> it's a great analogy. Evil Cobo. They they play so similar though. It's like a cartoon character. I evil think um, Cobo. Cobo's kind of more chill in his personality, I guess. Mm. Which a bit nonchalant. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on Latrell not making it? I, th- I think yeah, it's I fine. I didn't want it's him fine. on their side, and I think it's a good standard to set. I think that he, you know, his, his attitude was a bit shit prior to, you know, just that game that he got suspended. Like, he was carrying on like an absolute pork chop on mm. the field. And then there was that couple of weeks prior to that, maybe a month before that, where he was just going out of his way to swear, like mm. trying to swear. Oh, I didn't. I didn't think so. Well, he, got ma- well, he, he swore, then was made aware of it, and then kind of went, "I'm just going to do it." Yeah, but, but yeah, it's, but it was the wrong time and place. Look, we all swear, but he's, you know, in, the, in that, in that, I might be getting a bit grey. I'm a group, group greyer than you, but well, I think that that was the wrong time and place. But wrong attitude. But outside of attitude, just his footy hasn't been great. That's I mean, true. That's true. And I think from Madge's words, he probably doesn't play this series. To be honest. In my opinion, well, like, I think he said he, you know, anything he goes on won't shut any door. Yeah, you, you, you we'll, never know what's we'll, going to happen. We'll, we'll see how he goes in the next couple. But Origin will obviously have a preview next Tuesday or oh, next Tuesday because we release it Wednesday. Next Wednesday's episode's coming out early then, so uh, we'll upload the audio at about twelve o'clock, and the video will come out about the same time as well. So you've got sufficient amount of time. We'll Actually, no, we'll keep it up. We'll keep it up. We'll put it now forward to four o'clock. Let's do that. Yeah, sweet. All right, let's look into the tips for the week. Last week, we were doing all right. I didn't get a Sunday tip, though. I changed two of mine, not like on the app. Like, yeah. And I got them both wrong, the ones that I changed. You got them both wrong. Yeah. I um, I was actually doing really well because I tipped Manly to beat 
um, Melbourne. Yep. So I was in good stead. I tipped Penrith to beat the Sharks, which we both did. Yep. But then that Sunday game, uh, Titans beating the Broncos, we should have... You, we went past it and you pulled me up. You're like, I don't think the Titans are going to oh, be... Oh, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. So I remember we went on to the next team and I went, oh, sorry, I hate to sort of bring it yeah. back, but the Titans aren't a walkover. I said it a bit, non, you know, a bit sort of just throw away, like, oh, yeah, Broncos, easy. Yeah, but, but you pulled me up on that to mm. make sure you said that. So I think that's a good play from you. But at the same time, they won this coinciding matchup last year. So we really should have... But this side that they had is ridiculous. On yeah. paper, it looks stupid. It's, like, it's, it's weird, isn't it? We look at it and you go... And I was putting bets on, which I lost on this one. I'm like, I know they always score over the t over 20 points. You know, the, the, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Just can't see, I don't know where it's happening today. Well, they bloody did it and they won. The other two games that I changed last week, I changed... Um, I went to Para instead of the Bunnies. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I got that wrong because I was originally the Bunnies. And I also changed from the Waz to the Finns and got that wrong. Just I, yeah, the Waz, good, good on them. Yeah, good on the Waz. It's, it's funny how these teams lose their best players and they're just simplified their footy and they're going back. Uh, so let's start with the Knights first, the Bulldogs. The Knights, uh, Ooh, no, so... Para versus Sharks. Oh, where am I missing that? So that's just Thursday. not there. Anyway, these odds are brought to you by Picklebet. Head over to picklebet.com.au for exclusive markets and exclusive offers. They have the best odds available. Uh, make sure to use the code TURBO when signing up and make sure to know what you're really gambling with. For free and confidential support, visit 1-800-858-858. Rather call that or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au for your, for your gambling issues to be resolved. All right, so Parramatta versus the Sharks. I don't have the odds for this one yet, but uh, who are you? Same at dollar sixty-seven two twenty-one. Yeah, where I'm looking. But yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going Parramatta. I haven't looked enough into the teams list, so this might, these are probably. I'm, please don't back just what I'm saying because I've said it. Like, I don't know if you really trust in my opinion yeah. that much. I, I haven't looked into it this week at all with the um, uh, lineups, but yeah, I'm going to go with the bookies and just go the fave here, but. Yeah, maybe the Sharks have got a bit to bounce back from too, right? They right. do, but no Nico, no McInnes, and McInnes has been their glue all season. Uh, I'm going the Parramatta Eels. Yeah, I'll just go to the forward pack just real quick and then just decide from there. Uh, Moses no, is back. Oh, Moses, is back. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll take Parry. Give me Parry. Paul, me, Paul me. Owen RCG are starting. Uh, I'm happy you to go Parramatta. Me, uh, they're just missing Hopgood. And uh, Newcastle Knights play the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Newcastle Knights paying dollar fifty three. The Bulldogs two dollars forty six. I'm going the Newcastle Knights. Yeah. I think the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs have been great this year, but they're depleted. Uh, Panthers play the Dragons. Panthers are a dollar forty versus two ninety at home to the Dragons. I'll be going those Panthers. They're looking all right. I'm yep. excited to see a lot of these guys get a go too. I really was hoping Isaiah Yongi would get a go, a crack at fullback this week, but um, I think Dane Laurie. I'm is, excited to see Laurie. Yeah, so, so am I. Uh, Dolphins play the Canberra Raiders. Dolphins are a dollar sixty. Play the Canberra Raiders two dollars thirty. I'm going the Canberra Raiders. Uh, I'll go Fins. Nice. And the Sydney Roosters play the North Queensland Cowboys. The Roosters are paying $1.12. The Cowboys are paying $6. I'm going to say the Roosters. I'm going to say it with arrogance. There's going to be no pulling you back and going, oh, no, better be. No, yeah, like bloody Roosters. They're on fire. And I know the Cowboys won last week, but. Yeah, I just, I'm just real off their defense, eh? Hey? I think Basket so too. Defense. And I think, like, the Roosters aren't missing too much. No, they look good. Uh, all the odds besides the Parramatta game, you can get $5.51 for that. Ugh, ugh, brother. Ugh. Uh, but I assume, what odds were Parramatta at before? $2.21? Uh, $1.67. $1.67. So that would probably bump it up to $10 for the multi. So head over to our Instagram. I'll put the odds up for that at the end of the week. But you've got a game. We've got a game. It's the same game, so I just want to touch on it. Last week, we, we've done this, I think, a couple of weeks now. It's the blind um, draft squad where I give you two players in each position. One of them is more of a premium option. The other one is sort of more of your stock standard footy player that is usually uh, still good but not, you know, amazing. 
Um, we when we discussed it last week, we, the way we did the game is you pick six guns and um, you'll end up having seven of these lesser quality ones. Yep. And you pulled me up and you went, oh, maybe we just need to play this game with just three guns or just four guns, just so it's a bit more like an NRL Like slide. a salary cap, But then yeah. I called you and I had a bit of a revelation. I was like, well, hold on. If we've got two players in each position and, you know, you're picking six guns and the other side will have seven guns, so technically the other side should be a better side yep. to the side that you don't pick. Yep. They should have the advantage. So that balances it out. So I have tried to make it not as uh, – I think the way I've gone about it this week might make it a bit more creative. You might be able to make different decisions. Yep. Yeah. I so I need I need seven players. Six. 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 Okay, let's go. Yeah. You six guns you can pick between. So yep. number one in fullback, you got Reese Walsh or Tristan Saylor. Reese Walsh. Putting the water pistol there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dallin Wateni Zalesniak or Montoya. Montoya. Uh, Herbie Farnworth or Avarillo? Avarillo. Joey Manu or Joseph Suwalihi? Oh. I'll go Manu. Whew. I like this game. I've got, I would have gone two different ones to the way you've gone so far. Um, what do we got here? Yep. Uh, winger. You went. Oh, you went Marnie, didn't you? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, winger. Sivo or Simonson? Simonson. Simonson. I pronounced that wrong. Yep. <laughs> and uh, tick for that. Five eight. Yep. Five eight. We've got Luai or Jack Cole. Oh, I'll go Luai. Luai gun. Then halfback. You've got to pick between DCE and Brooks. DCE. Okay, I think I'm just going to bring you up to date of where you're at. I've got four guns. I thought you got five. No, I've got four. Okay, can we just go, roll over who you've got? So you've gone, I've, I've got, got you Walsh, as Walsh, Montoya, Montoya Avarillo, Avarillo, Manu, Manu Simonson. Simonson. There you, you go. You put Simonson as a gun, didn't you? No, no, I've got Sevo Simonson. I just got it wrong. I just. I, Simonson's is. a way better player than Sevo, so I, <laughs> I feel like I won that. I disagree. Um, Number uh, eight. Yep. Hass or Xavier Willison? Oh, um, I'm going to go Willison. Wilson. Okay. Brandon or Sandon? Sandon. Smith. Sandon. Uh, Sandon. AFB or Bunty Afoa? AFB. Okay, uh, you've got Olukawatu or Burbo. Ooh. Burbo. Big kicks or the weak gutted dog? Oh, weak gutted dog. <sighs> Breaks my heart. Cam Murray or Talis Duncan? That's right. <sighs> I'll go Cam Murray. Can't Obviously. <laughs> so you've got, yeah, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six guns. Yeah. So my team is Reese Walsh. Reese Walsh. I'll read you. Mar you read your side and I'll read the opposite. All right. Reese Walsh, Marcelo Montoya, Jake Avarillo, Joey Manu, Bailey Simonson, Jerome Luai, Daly Cherry Evans, Xavier Willison, Sandon Smith, Adam Fanil Blake, Ben Trebojevic. Um, I forget who number 12 is. Salmon. Jamin Salmon and Cameron Murray. And they play. And they will play Tristan Saylor. Dallin Wateni Zelezniak. Herbie Farnworth. Suwalihi. Sivo. Jack Cole and Dylan, uh, sorry, um, Brooks, Brooks, his name. Bro Luke Brooks. Luke Brooks, yeah. I was about to call him Dylan. Um, Payne Haas. Payne Haas. Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith. 
Bunty? No, Bunty, AFP. Yeah, Bunty or Foal. I Bunty chose, I chose I'm getting AFP. confused between my emojis now. Kick out. And Talis Duncan. It's hard. You have to kind of see him on paper and just sort of see how it balances out. Oh. I think the tough thing is whenever you – the halves usually win the, the matchup. So if you get your two – Well, that's that's why I'm like choose the halves. Well, do you know what I tried to get a bit – I tried to get a bit confusing by putting um, two guys from the same – I know they're all from the same team, but last week I think you might have gone guys from different spots. So yeah. Because, they, because Lil Wai and Jack Cole, you're trying to fit them both into yeah. 5'8", then DC and Brooks both in the halfback. I thought it might have thrown you somehow yeah. to make you go a little bit different. But maybe the game would be you can only have one – if you pick a gun fight to improve the game for next time, if you pick a gun 5'8", that means you go the shit halfback, mm. potentially. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, we're, let's do one last game, and that is don't speak until for you. So don't speak until I say a better player than Billy Army Kikau. All right, let's start. Ben Trebojevic. Heal him, Lukey. Scott Sorensen. Liam Martin. Hamoli Olakowatu. David fuck Fafida. <laughs> yeah, probably all Kawadu, but of a fuck, man. It's really hard. Like, I feel like I, I gave birth to Viliami kick out. Um, yeah. Nice. Tough. Probably nice Liam stuff. Martin, too. At his peak, though, at, at, at kick out's peak, Ola Kawadu has not been as good as kick out at his peak. That's a fair comment. So, should I keep going? Because it's kind of, it's cop out, but it's not, it's cop out. Angus Crichton. Yeah, he's better. Yeah, okay. Nice. Nice. And he's been better. Liam Martin's been pretty too. shit this year, so I'm happy for you to skip him. Like yeah. he's been underwhelming. Like I love him too, but I yeah, I'm you know, you got I love the exciting guys that have got real excitement and just Oh Kawadu has that, you know. Yeah. Crichton's got that excitement too. Yep. Just the force, palm. See you later, stick the tongue out, and off he goes. <laughs> All right. Cheers for tuning in this week. Uh we'll see you next week for our origin preview and Good luck with your footy tipping and whatever you do on the Life weekend. Life choices. Have fun. Have fun on the weekend. Mm.